In this video, I'm gonna be telling you five things that you absolutely have to do before you go to Florida. Just a little bit of housekeeping though, before we do get started, everything we're gonna be talking about in today's video is gonna be from the point of view of a UK British national traveling to the United States directly. So if that's not you, your mileage may vary. Better to check with your local government to see what your requirements are. Okay, so let's get this one out of the way and it's not a political statement, but if you do wanna visit the United States of America, you are gonna to have to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19. Now, at the time of recording this video, what does fully vaccinated mean in the eyes of the US government? Well, it means that you've had two doses of an approved vaccine. It doesn't matter when you had them, don't have to have had your booster, as long as you can prove that you've had both doses, two doses of an approved vaccine, so Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Moderna, something like that, prove that certificate, then you are good to go to the States. That is if you're an adult. If you're a child, you actually don't need to be vaccinated, but currently you do still need to carry out the day, I think it's between three and five, lateral flow test and just have that on hand in case anybody asks you to prove that you have tested. Obviously, anybody testing positive for COVID-19 should currently self-isolate. The rules on this is constantly changing, so I will leave a link in the description down below just so you can check for yourselves what the current rules are. This next one sounds like kind of obvious, but you are gonna need to get a passport. Getting a passport is fairly straightforward. You can do it online, but be warned, at the moment the passport office is saying to expect around a 10 week turnaround for your passport. So leave yourself plenty of time. I have heard of people getting them back much, much quicker. Some friends of ours did theirs recently and they were back between two and three weeks. But I've also heard of people where it's taken longer. So leave yourself plenty of time to get that passport in hand. So the next thing you're gonna do once you've got your passport in hand is you need to get yourself an ESTA. What is an ESTA? Well, ESTA stands for Electronic System for Travel Authorization. And it basically sits in place of a visa so that people like us in the UK can travel to the United States for holidays and things like that for periods of up to 90 days at a time. Now, an ESTA will cost you, it costs $21 per person and everybody traveling has to have one. It lasts for a period of up to two years because I say up to, if you change your passport, you will need to change your ESTA. So remember, new passport means new ESTA. Okay, so bear that in mind because they have to match. Otherwise, you can't get in. And ESTA isn't guaranteed. Okay, so again, I would recommend that you do this in plenty of time, preferably before you even book a holiday to make sure that you can get into the United States because they can be refused. And when that happens, that's gonna mean you're gonna to have to take a trip to the US Embassy in London. And at the moment, I think at the time of recording this video, it's June and I think the earliest appointments for the Embassy are like November. So it's a bit of a nightmare, um, but it's pretty straightforward to do. And actually, I'm planning on doing a video on this channel about it, so stay tuned for that. Okay, next one. Uh, I guess technically isn't a must, but is definitely a, a should. And that is please, please, please get yourself some travel insurance if you're planning to travel to the United States. Um, super, super important to make sure that you're adequately covered. Healthcare in America is not like the NHS. You can't just rock up somewhere. They will want to see proof of insurance or at least how you're gonna pay for it. And it can run into thousands and thousands of dollars when things go wrong. An example, a friend of ours, and this is a few years ago now, broke their arm, slipped in the pool, broke their arm, uh, had to go and have it set. And that would have cost around $17,000. And this is, a, this is like a while ago as well. So I can't imagine it's gotten any cheaper. While we're on the subject of travel insurance, I hate to talk about it again, but COVID-19, um, I would speak to your travel insurance provider that you've chosen about where you stand with COVID-19 and being vaccinated. So for example, you may be vaccinated, but your children may not. Does that affect anything when it comes to uh, if you have to make a claim or anything like that? It's worth asking the question. Some companies, they're okay. Other companies, nah, not so much. I've heard people having some, some dramas about it. So it's definitely worth checking 
before you pull the trigger on that insurance policy because at the end of the day you definitely want it but there's no point in having it if they're not going to cover you so and this one's a little bit more on the light-hearted side um, and what you're going to want to do before you go to florida is chances are you're planning on visiting disney world if you're looking at going to orlando and what you definitely need to be doing is you definitely need to be making those theme park reservations at this moment in time you still have to make reservations to be able to visit walt disney world there's a whole system online where you can go and book your tickets you will need to have your tickets uh, available in hand to actually link to the my disney experience app but go ahead get your tickets and get your park days booked because the last thing you want is to have that horrible situation which unfortunately some people have found themselves in where they end up getting to uh, Orlando and looking to try and book days at Disney World and there's just no days available. Um, I don't think that's happened very often, but it definitely could happen. As always, these things are subject to change, so I would just check frequently with the My Disney Experience app if it's even a thing anymore. But as of right now, if you want to visit any of the main Disney theme parks, so Animal Kingdom, Magic Kingdom, uh, Hollywood Studios or Epcot, you will, are going to have to book days. Water parks are excluded, you can just rock up to a water park however. Well hopefully this video has helped you out at least a little bit, but no doubt you have got more questions, but don't worry, we've got you covered right here on this channel in this video, where we answer 10 of your most commonly asked questions about Florida.